Now I have to tell you, Little Pink is definitely one of the weirdest artists I've ever discovered. The music... The persona, just the way he talks and carries himself, it just makes you feel like he just can't look away. I had never heard of the guy before he reached out to me to do an interview, but after I did it and I listened to his music, I was like, there's definitely something crazy going on here because the music sounds like something I've never heard before and he's definitely getting a lot of attention on it. But why and how? What is he capturing? What is he tapping into? And how is he making a go at this music stuff and the way that he's doing it? Well, we have to figure that out when we look into the story of Lil Pink. Travis Thompson was born in Canton, Ohio on May 30th, 2003, and that city is very very dangerous, there's a lot of gangs around there, a lot of police violence, so of course when he was growing up he would often get into trouble. His father would also go to prison when he was at the age of 4 and only come back into his life at the age of 14. You see, I told your mother. I'll be back. And so for the most part, he didn't really have a father figure to guide him and show him what to do and how to do things right, you know, everything you need to really be a well-adjusted human being. But when he wasn't getting into trouble in school, he would often play guitar and try to emulate the rock stars that he would see on TV. <laughs> So draw, he had a lot of different creative outlets that he would tap into. But after a while, he would realize that being a rock star really wasn't the way to go about it. Music and rap was really the way that he should go. Yeah, yeah, sometimes when I'm lonely. I stick my dick in baloney. So being inspired by the Juggalos, ICP, Twisted, and all those types of people, he decided to start building his own persona and rapping once he got to high school. He was also very fascinated by all the industry plants that were coming out around the time, Kid Boo, Baby Goth, Smiles, even though he's not really an industry plant, basically anyone who had a really outgoing look, somebody that he could really take notice of, and he would try to reach out to several of them, but they would usually just turn him down, not talk to him, or try to ask for money for features. So the plan was to try to rap with a group that he found in high school, but I really can't find any any information about these people whatsoever. Apparently they were more jokey and didn't really want to take rap serious, but he wanted to take it more serious so they'd eventually break up and he became a solo artist. And of course being born in 2003, you know by the time that he was almost done high school the pandemic would break out so he would be at home all the time and this is when he really started to work on the little pink persona. Dyeing his hair, getting that face mask that he wears everywhere, and of course he would try to jump on the trend of TikTok. He was seeing all these people blow up out of their basement just by making a couple songs, getting their sound featured on a bunch of TikToks and then they were blown up overnight so he'd start making his own which he described as kind of jackass meets i don't know joker 305 i guess he would basically describe it as him jumping off of roofs hurting himself trying to do anything he could and say anything he could that would be controversial enough to get attention and then after that he would tell people to scream his music and this would start to work because his tiktok got to almost 300,000 followers but then he got removed for supposedly saying that he didn't fuck with tiktok or hurting himself something that went against the terms of service so it got deleted he made another one it got like a hundred thousand followers got deleted it was basically this never-ending cycle of trying to make a TikTok, getting it popping, and then it got deleted after that. But he was able to transition some of that success into his music, and when he dropped his first official project, or first official song with a music video, I guess you could say, it really started to pop off. This track was called In My Head, and when you listen to it, you're like, oh man, what's going on here? It It definitely sounds a little offbeat, a little weird, a little downtrod. I guess it's kind of interesting and you would definitely want to notice it, but I'm not sure if it's really good music, you would say. But despite that, it hit almost a half a million views on YouTube, so he's definitely doing something right. And that led a lot of people to think that he was an industry plan himself because overnight he had a video that immediately popped off, but none of his music before that point was still up, so people didn't really know that he had been working for a couple years before that point. But in my interview, he would explain to me the reason his videos look so good is because he would go to the studio, record music there, and then he actually was able to shoot music videos at the same studio. They had this room that he was able to work in, they brought the models in, there was a makeup team, it was a whole operation. He would say it would cost about $600 to get this done, but apparently it was worth it because it started to pop off, and then after that he kept rolling with that. Apparently before this point, venues would turn him away when he tried to play music there, but after his videos started to blow up, he was able to do shows, and then they would sell out, he was headlining venues, and now apparently he's touring all over Ohio, and he's actually doing shows with some pretty big names as well, so it looks like it's really starting to pop off for him. After In My Head came Save Me, and this one got 9,000 views, which is definitely a lot less than the first, but then after that, he was able to get a feature from Baby E, who's somebody who actually worked with Lil Peep, was signed to Lil Wayne, and also worked with Ouija Mac, who's a pretty notable juggalo, and Lil Pink himself actually also used to be a juggalo, but apparently because of things that will soon transpire that I'll mention a little bit later on, he stopped being one and decided to just leave the lifestyle behind. After that, he ended up dropping three more videos throughout the year, and then he dropped his first official album called Life is 
pink and this would get him noticed by artists like Stitches, the Insane Clown Posse and he even got a feature from Twisted. But unfortunately since the Insane Clown Posse and Twisted are at war, after they seen that he was posted up with them, they decided to block him, call him out, and say that he was a sucker for hanging out with suckers. And this would cause Lil Pink to drop a diss track on Violent J called Sad Clown which Violent J never really responded to, not sure if he will in the future but that's where it is right now. But Pink just kept going, making more music with his producer known as Great Dag who apparently was in the Halloween movies, he's also an actor in Euphoria, and it seems like he's growing by the day getting bigger and bigger, but it's really weird how some of his music videos are super big, some are smaller, I'm not really sure why that is, they're all in the same style, and he doesn't get that many comments either, so it's a little strange there. I mean, his Spotify is doing okay, he doesn't have a SoundCloud, and he just dropped a song called Witchy Bitch, which seems to be doing really well on Spotify, but less good on YouTube, it's really strange, his numbers are super inconsistent. I mean, I can kind of see why people throw the industry plant label at him, because it seems like he has these numbers that are really big one day, and then the next video he drops isn't as big, so it's like, I don't know what's going on with that, but he's been doing interviews lately to try to clear his name and try to explain who he really is, where he came from. And it definitely seems like he's omitting details, but for the most part, I think that's the story of Lil Pink. He's just a guy who happened to go to the studio, spend some money, get some pretty big videos, and now he's blowing up doing shows with a bunch of big people. And yeah, I just did an interview with him, so if you want to check that out, it did really well, so it kind of seems like people follow him, but once again, the comments are really low. Shit's kind of weird there, but for the most part, I think that's the story of Lil Pink. Okay, so I recorded the first part of that video about two weeks ago i thought it was very interesting to see this guy who i interviewed who just seems to have this really big audience that nobody really knows about i thought it was a little bit suspicious but after my interview got like 10,000 views i'm like wow this guy really must have a cult fan base I mean, honestly, my bullshit detector should have been going off at that point, but I was like, you never know, he makes Juggalo music, and Juggalos like kind of weird stuff, so it's very possible that he did build up his own fan base. but part of me is thinking that he didn't because it's like, well, some of these views are really, really high, some are low, it doesn't seem like people really comment or interact with anything he did, but I was like, you know what, maybe it's gonna work out, he got 10,000 views, he has some pretty high quality music videos, he's doing something that's working, maybe I'll do a video and it'll be interesting, but then I look at my interview and all of a sudden, 4,000 views have been taken off off of it. Now in my life I've never seen that happen before. Every YouTube video I put out maybe they don't do the best, they don't get that many views, but I've never seen views get taken off a YouTube video so clearly YouTube is doing something to actually like remove the views which makes me think he must be botting. But you know this guy has been being really nice to me, he's been talking, giving me information, we did the whole interview together so I'm like you know dude what's going on? Do you think it's a glitch? And he's like oh yeah that's probably what it is. I mean that happens sometimes. Some people watch the video over and over again so YouTube will take the views away but I've never seen them take like 4,000 away before. That's very weird so I'm like this is complete bullshit he must be botting so I hit on my buddy and I'm like can you look into this guy see what's going on with his numbers and if you look at his videos he's got one that's got like half a million views and if you look at the line it's like up down up down it's very unnatural because usually when people watch stuff they come back but there's days he's getting zero views and then there's days he's getting like 300 a thousand four thousand like I can't really explain to you the stats in a perfect way but look at this and then look at mine it's not very natural so not only did he bought my interview and then lie about it he also bought it his own stuff he actually bought it his entire career and made this whole persona and that's the reason that nobody really knows who he is. That's probably the reason he covered up all his old music because it probably didn't have the same number of views. I'm not really sure exactly what's going on here. We were able to take a look at some of his archive posts and it looks like he used to have an OnlyFans where he would sleep with the girls that he has in his videos or at least he would show them naked. I'm not really sure what was going on there but apparently that's how he got some attention. And in my interviews he let me know that he would get his TikTok accounts deleted over and over again because apparently he was going against their guidelines but it's pretty clear at this point that he was botting the entire time and that's that's probably why. I mean, I know it's hard nowadays for people to get natural fan bases. It's hard to get yourself out there and really get everything working. You're putting money into videos and you want people to see it, but botting is not the way. It's like using steroids. It's cheating, basically. But I wasn't going to say anything because I was like, you know what? There's no reason to expose this guy. He seems pretty nice. I mean, I don't respect botting. I'm going back and forth. I'm like, you know what? I feel like people need to know that he's botting his stuff, but at the same time, people don't really care about what he's doing, so it doesn't matter. But, but I'm like, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just let him slide. I end up not really responding to him for a couple days. He really wants me to make the video, but I'm like, I can't risk putting a video up about you that you're going to bot on my main channel because you're going to mess up everything I got going on here and I just can't have that happening. Not to mention it's going to look bad to viewers. People are going to think I'm a botter. People already think that people are paying me off to make videos like Iron Low Gut and Leprosy and that's not the case. It's just that they're cool guys who want me to do videos on them. You know, we're kind of friends, friendly, so I do the videos because of that. Nobody's paying me to do videos, but if I put a botter and then try to give him a nice story and talk about his whole upbringing, it just wouldn't 
feel right. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do the video. I'm just going to leave it be. But then all of a sudden he posts on his story calling me a hoe. This guy was hitting me up daily being like, I'm checking in. I'm seeing what's up, you know, what's going on. And I'm like, you know, man, I don't really want to say that. Yeah, you're a botter. I'm not going to make a video. I don't really want to have beef with you or anything like that. So I'm going to leave it be. But then he posts on his story saying I'm ignoring him. And because of that, I'm a hoe. So that's cool. So you know what? Screw it. I decided to put together the video that you wanted me to do. Please don't bot this video. And I don't really want to work with you anymore, to be honest with you. If you're going to bot stuff and not do it the fair way, then I don't really have a whole lot of respect for that. Sell promo is fine. Putting your stuff up the way that it is is fine. But if you're just botting numbers and just completely buying your entire fan base, then that's not cool. I worked hard to get to where I am. I would appreciate if you didn't buy stuff on my videos slash interviews. And anyone else who does that, honestly, you're lame. Gotta say you're lame. I don't like people who bought shit. I know people bought Instagrams and blah, blah, blah. That's one thing. But when it's YouTube videos, stuff that matters like Spotify, SoundCloud, yeah, we don't f with that over here. So there you have it. We got another guy with colored hair that I apparently gave some form of clout to, probably gave him more attention than I should have, but that's what I do. All I do is get into buffoonery. It's all buffoonery all the way down, and I promise the next video won't be drama shit like this, but if you enjoy it, hey, let me know. The world is a wild and wacky place, and I'm not saying harass the dude. Just leave him alone. Let him live his life. You know, I'm just saying he bought, so I wouldn't really want to work with that, wouldn't want to interact with that personally, and I feel like a lot of artists trying to make their way up in the world probably wouldn't respect that as well, and that's all I got to say. And if somebody stops responding to you, uh, you know, don't post them on your story calling them out because when your entire career is built off of lies, uh, it's probably not the best thing to throw stones from a glass house. All I got to say, subscribe to the channel. Channel number two, Twisted Society. Sometimes I can't say that right. I go Twisted Society, but yeah, Twisted Society. That's what it is. Said it three times now. Go over there, listen to the music, get your own music submitted. And if that channel gets to a thousand subscribers, I'm going to start live streaming. So if you want to see that, definitely check it out. And besides that, thank you guys for watching. Shout out Knife King. See you in the next one. Bam.